equity and fairness can be a very abstract concept. And, and what I've always found is that having a framework, a, a mental model to think about fairness is always helpful. In that mental model that I want you to think about and start with is the idea of a horse race. And how do we create fairness in a horse race? I mean, after all, horses start the race, they run through the race, and there's a winner. Whichever horse is fastest wins. Well, it's not quite that simple. You see, different horses have different advantages or disadvantages. There are a variety of differences across horses. One of the most common ones is that horses are carrying different amounts of weight. So people managing horse races engage in a process called handicapping. And that process of handicapping is designed to put additional weight on a horse to take away any unfair advantage that it might have. They equalize the field to make it as fair as possible. Or perhaps a better way to say this is to make sure that it's not unfair. And that's largely how we've been approaching our strategies when it comes to creating a fair employee experience. Our strategy has not been to create a high fairness environment. Our strategy has been to make sure that we're not creating unfairness. We're making sure that no one is put at a disadvantage when it comes to creating a fair, more equitable employee experience. And we tend to apply these approaches in three areas. We ask, are our recruiting processes fair? And what we mean by that is, let's make sure nobody has an unfair advantage. We ask, are our pay policies fair? making sure that no one is getting paid more than what they should be paid given the situation. We ask, do we promote fairly? We test to make sure that there isn't any adverse impact occurring. These policies and approaches are good. They're necessary. They're things that we should continue to focus on. And let me give you a real specific example of what this looks like. One of the things that a lot of organizations have done is to try to take away any unfair advantage that occurs during the hiring process, in particular around names on resumes. And one of the things that we've seen a lot of organizations do is take names off of resumes. Now, the logic behind this is sound. People are biased against other people based upon their names. And there's a lot of research that shows that if you have a name that has a certain ethnic background, you're less likely to make it through a recruiting process. So what have companies done in response? They take the names off the resumes to try to eliminate that bias, to take away that unfair advantage that someone has because they have a more common name. Now, that's a good thing to do. We should eliminate those moments of unfairness. Being not unfair is good. That's not everything, though. We aspire to even more. We don't aspire to simply not being bad. We aspire to more than that. Our employees deserve better than that. To get that performance and retention benefit that we talked about, we need to not just be not unfair, we need to actually increase fairness. It's the right thing to do, it improves our companies. And as the research team was working on this and trying to understand what's going on, trying to figure out how to build towards this more fair employee experience, we had a realization. To build this more fair experience, maybe it's not just about those key moments that we all spend a lot of time focusing on, those moments of pay, promotion, and hiring. Perhaps it's broader than that. So I want you to spend just a little bit of time thinking here, reflecting and, and thinking about your own experiences. Have you ever been in a meeting where there's a lot of people who are in the room and maybe one person was on the phone or on the video for it? Did you ever forget about that person that was on the phone? Or maybe right at the last minute as everything was wrapping up, you remember, oh, hey, yeah, you on the phone. Do you have anything to add here? As papers were crinkling and everyone was leaving. Have you ever seen a manager pick someone for a development opportunity or promotion just because they knew that person the best? Not because they really looked and thought about who could be best for that role or that opportunity, but because they knew them the best. Have you ever seen something like that happen? Maybe it's happened to you. Have you ever seen one of your colleagues not get recognized for the hard work that they were doing? Maybe even worse, the manager recognized and celebrated the person that spoke the most, but not necessarily the person who did the most. And as we were thinking about this question of fairness, we started to wonder, 
Maybe fairness isn't just driven by those big moments around pay, promotion, and hiring. It's the whole experience. And we need to be focusing on and thinking about that whole experience. And as we did the analysis here, what we found is that those handful of moments around pay, promotion, and hiring are critical in terms of framing whether or not employees feel like they've got a fair experience. But it only accounts for roughly a fourth of what frames their entire perception of whether or not they've got a fair experience. All of those other things, those moments of recognition, being the one remote person while everyone else is in the room, not being picked for that opportunity matter. It's not just about those big moments, it's about everything across the experience that frames whether or not they've got a fair employee experience. And this is what we've realized. The most important question for HR executives today is how do we create a fair employee experience in our changing work environment? And that's the question that more than 70% of HR executives are laser focused on as we're looking into 2022. How do we create a fair experience given the new hybrid world, the post-pandemic world, the new digital world that we're all going to be living in? And how should we go about doing that? Well, as we were working on this, our, our first thought was, well, what are the policies that could work? And I'm here to tell you some sad news. Policies aren't gonna get us there. First, as we've been talking about policy-based solutions, just to make sure that we're not being unfair, uh, we aspire to more than that. Second, what we just saw is that as we're trying to root cause this problem, unfairness has the potential to occur everywhere. It's just not feasible to create a policy for every situation. If we tried that, our policies would take thousands of thousands of pages. You can't have a policy solution for every possible experience that could occur. And third, each person's experience is different. My experience is different than yours. Yours is different than the person sitting next to you and so on. If each person's experience is different, then you can't have a policy-based solution. We're not gonna create a fair employee experience with policy solutions. We have to change our thinking. Our policies only reach part of the problem and where it works, we should keep doing that. But to do even more, where we need to have, what we need to have is a new set of philosophies on how we're gonna build a more fair experience. Not policies, philosophies. What is the belief system we need to create to build a fair employee experience? And to that point, we need to change our mental model. We need to move from thinking about fairness as horse racing and to start thinking about our new philosophy. Fairness is automatic doors. Things that help us lift up all. Things that minimize the disadvantages that anyone might have, but they also have the potential to benefit all in that process. And this is where we like this mental model, automatic doors. And here's why. An automatic door clearly helps people who are physically challenged, makes it easier for them to come in and out from that perspective. But it also helps people that are carrying bags of groceries. It helps people that are coming in when it's raining outside and trying to juggle their umbrellas and getting inside the building. It benefits everyone. Now, there are certainly times when we need to have that horse racing approach, when we need to remove that unfair disadvantage that might exist. In those situations, we should keep our old approaches. But to create a more fair experience, we want to lift up to a higher level. Now, in order to figure out how to operationalize our new automatic doors philosophy, we went back to our employees. And we asked them some simple questions. What would need to happen to have a more fair experience? And as we did focus group after focus group, conversation after conversation, survey after survey, interaction after interaction, interview after interview, there is a series of things that continue to come up from employees. One, they felt informed. They felt like they knew what was going on. Two, they felt supported that their organization had their back. Three, they felt considered when opportunities came up that they were qualified for. And fourth, they were acknowledged. And I would argue, if you're trying to think what sort of questions to bake into your next pulse survey, your next employee survey, whatever it might be, you could do a whole lot worse than just asking your employees about these four things. Do you feel informed? Do you feel supported? Do you feel considered? Do you feel acknowledged? 
That's what we heard from employees about what makes a fair employee experience with them.